All right, here we are. We got a 2003 Chevy pickup, big 5.3, uh, V8 in it. Customer complaint: AC is blowing warm, not cold. So we verified the customer concern. Uh, warm air from the vents. Uh, snowflake buttons on. All that stuff's working like it should. Uh, we come out of the hood. We can tell. It sounds like the AC compressor is short cycling. So we hooked up the gauges. You can tell here. Compressor is running. Low side. Pulls down real quick, hits that low side pressure switch. High side pressure is very low, even when the compressor is running. So wait, compressor's running. We're only getting up about 110 PSI. Uh, might zoom in here, or come close. You can kind of hear. It's a little tough to see, but you can hear that compressor cycling, short cycling. So it's off right now. Compressor's on, compressor's off again. So uh, there is a little bit of uh, touch test like you can do. It is making some cold, but looks like a, a classic play, ca classic case of low charge. So we pulled off one of the service port caps and it has a little bit of pressure behind it, like one of the service ports leaking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna recover and see how much refrigerator we get out of this thing. So we're gonna shut the engine off and we'll recover this guy. All right, we got this guy recovered. Sure enough, it's low. We uh, recovered, all we got was about four tenths of a pound. So really low, so 0.395 of a pound. So not much refrigerant at all. This holds 1.6 pounds. Uh, like I said, our high pressure service port was leaking, had a little bit of pressure behind it when we took the cap off initially, so we know it's leaking. We have us a new one here. We're gonna replace, we're gonna go ahead and put a low side service port in it as well. So I'll show you how to do that. These high side service ports have a specialty socket. It's kind of a weird size. You can use a regular socket, but these are aluminum. You really wanna try and get these specialty ones. Uh, you can use just an open end wrench on there that, that works fair, but these sockets aren't, aren't very expensive at all. Uh, and it's gonna hold it in there just right, so. Uh-oh. If you look, this is a specialty socket just for the service ports. Uh, they're made to fit just correctly in there. Uh, you can use a traditional socket, but these ones aren't too expensive since these fittings are aluminum. These kind of help, but show you how to change it. You do wanna make sure to use a backup wrench on there. I'm gonna take this extension off. We'll try it like this. So uh, we're gonna change this guy out, but with that backup wrench, we're not gonna damage anything, hopefully. So remember, this is recovered. Uh, you don't wanna do this with the uh, pressure in there. All that refrigerant's gonna come out in a hurry. These O-rings need a little bit of lubrication. Refrigerant oil is the only thing you wanna lubricate them with. There's plenty of it running around here. We can catch it off our old part there. So we're gonna put that guy back in. Nice and easy. These are pretty common repair on these GM products. So, doesn't have to be crazy tight by any means. So with the high side changed, we're gonna change this low side service port as well since we're here so it's on this particular truck it's a traditional Schrader valve so just like the one in your tire so use a Schrader valve tool we're gonna change that one out it, it'll look in uh, very good shape Let's see if that focus maybe it's all black and nasty so got some gunk on it so we're gonna change that one While we're here, uh, these little Schrader valve tools, as you can see, it protects the panel, fits in there just like so. I usually just hold it just like that with my finger. Get it in there. Get 
in just snug. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. So we got both our service ports changed. So now we can prepare for recharge. So you gotta remember before you recharge, you gotta get all the contamination out. Number one contaminants air. So we're gonna hook up our recovery machine and we're gonna set it for a vacuum. And we'll probably do a 30 minute vacuum on this truck to make sure we get a good deep vacuum. So we'll set up the machine for a vacuum. It'll do a decay leak test to see if the vacuum decays, indicating a leak. If that passes, we'll charge it up and we'll see if we have some cool air. So we're gonna set it up for a vacuum. So we got this truck charged back up. Compressor's running and it is making some cold air. So we have cool air in the cab, but there is something that we noticed look here our high side pressure is getting really high our low side pressure is a little high but you can do touch test it is making cool air but if you notice our cooling fan you can't feel it here but it's not pulling any air across the radiator it's barely even moving so it's starting to catch up now hey it's coming on coming on a little bit like here. Our high side's actually coming down a little bit. But just a moment ago, that thing almost hit 450. So it's coming down. We're move, moving a little bit of air across that radiator and condenser, but still not quite enough. That fan clutch leaves me a little nervous. We're getting back to normal pressure now we're starting to pick up but earlier you could grab the fan blade and stop it with the engine running and we had about 450 psi on the high side so way too high so we're gonna put a fan clutch on this thing and see what the pressures look like after that but definitely a kind of a classic case of uh, uh, excessive high side pressure and that's going to limit your cool air in the cab it's going to overwork the compressor overheat the refrigerant oil all those things one test that you can do to see if, if you're unsure if it's an airflow issue. Obviously you can clean, you know, make sure there's no debris or anything between the radiator and the condenser. Uh, airflow's free, but you can always put a box fan in front of the, the, the car and blow air through it, or you can run a water hose over that condenser as well. And that's gonna remove that heat. But you have to get that heat out of the condenser. So we have to condense that refrigerant. It's, it's what's putting that heat into the atmosphere. So kind of a classic case, so that pressure it's never gonna lie. So we're looking a little better now for sure. So we're definitely back down to a more normal pressure, but uh, we let it run for about four or five minutes and we're about to hit max pressure cutoff on this thing. So uh, we're definitely gonna go put a fan clutch in this thing and see what it looks like after that. Something that you need to look out for. That ready as I'm gonna be. You ready? Giddy up. All right, so we're gonna change this fan clutch on this Chevy pickup here. Uh, we already went in and took the intake air duct off, but this is a pretty easy one to do. Uh, it's got a couple push pins on the upper hose here, this little degas hose, but we gotta get these push pins out of the fan clutch. I like to use a trim tool on those, pull those up. There's two on each side. That's gonna separate the two halves. And we got two ten. And with the upper half off, we're gonna take our clutch out of here. So this, the nut on the clutch itself is a 36 mil. And then on our water pump, Gonna take a specialty style spanner wrench so hopefully we can get this to work so this spanner wrench has two pins so we get those lined up let's see if we can move it here kind of to the left so on this particular uh, spanner wrench tool 
use a breakover bar with it. They do make these tools where it's all by itself. So what I like to do is I'm going to put these two wrenches together, kind of work against them. Uh, I believe this one is regular thread, not reverse thread. So it should just be lefty loosey. So we are going to try that first. Oh yeah. So we've got it broke loose. Just that easy. And we're going to spin the fan off. Come on now. Maybe. It's a little stuck on there. Usually it'll spin off real easy. Look out. You want to drop light? Hmm? You want to drop light? Drop light, drop light. It'll probably be helpful. Okay. So one thing to do when you spin it off, be careful as you get here to the end so you don't drop the fan and bust a hole in the radiator comes off that easy we're gonna take the three bolts four bolts out swap our fan clutch real quick here all right we got our clutch got our new one uh ooh, nice hardware so this is the finest dirt last let's zip this fan off kind of eyeball these what i always like to make sure is this distance here is usually the critical one so the the plane that the fan mounts up to where that thing's going to mount onto the uh, water pump nub there water pump uh, threads so looks looks good we're just eyeballing it you know for visual effect here. so this looks like it's the right one it's not an oe clutch we couldn't get one we got a better lens. I'm gonna put this one back on. I'm not gonna use these. I prefer these. They have Loctite on them. We're gonna run them down. Use the factory bolts still. So there we go. So as you can tell, just by spinning it, not doesn't feel like a ton of difference. But we'll see once we get it back on the truck. So sometimes these are a pain in the neck to lighting it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes these are a pain in the neck to get started. This one's not terrible. But what I like to do is if you can get a hand underneath there and kind of support the weight of it, then turn, make sure those threads get started. You can spin it on. So we get that on there. Get our spanner wrench back on to hold the pulley. So get those two pins lined up. So all you gotta do is snug it up. The way these work with the rotation of the engine, it's constantly tightening. So you don't have to go crazy on it. Uh, a lot of times those fan clutch nuts are really, really tight. So people think, hey, you gotta tighten it back down. Remember, it's it's going back together the same way. So snug it up, should be good. Get our, get our two bolts for our shroud. We might move. I don't know if that's in your way or not. Work the shroud down. I just hold that up. Get a couple hoses and stuff to get out of the way. But the big thing is, there's a couple pins that's going to line up there to provide alignment on the shroud, either side. So put our two bolts in, get those started. Four push pins. 
Uh, these push pins are kind of unique. They have a stepped, I don't know if you can see that, stepped base. So if you lose one, they are a little tricky to find a replacement, but they help locate that two halves together. We got those guys on, we'll put this air duct in. Go easy on those so you don't roll that rubber seal over. These are just 5 16 or 8 mil hose clamps. Looks good. Oh. We'll fire it up, see what happens. Uh, first impression, you can definitely tell it's moving some more air, just you can hear it, the air volume. You can feel it, a lot more air volume coming across that fan, uh, the radiator and fan. One thing that we are gonna do, we're gonna let this thing run, but we're gonna pull this panel off to make sure there's no debris between the radiator and the condenser. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of stuff in here. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, all these fur balls. So grass and pollen and cottonwood. So we'll wash that out. And that'll help the performance of the AC and the cooling system as well. So we won't show you that on film, but that needs to be blown out as well. So we'll clean all that out. You wanna make sure and be careful while doing it because it's real easy if you hit it with high pressure water or high pressure air, you can't bend over these fins. And you want as much airflow as possible, so be cautious when you're doing that. So don't get that pressure washer or garden hose or whatever too close. But we definitely need to blow that out. Make sure we got good airflow.